Playing off of uh, D-Rock Irish's comment right there, uh, I can't flip anywhere on social media where I'm not met with uh, a response from one way or the other on Paul Feinbaum. I did not hear it. I guess I saw the quote verbatim basically saying that Notre Dame being ranked in the top 10 in the country is a joke. They're, they're going to get blown out in week one. I don't necessarily put those two together. I could cite, and I think we all could cite a number of teams that were qualified to be in the top 10. that got blown out in week one. So I don't necessarily put those two together. They did go 11 and one last year and they've routinely finished in the top 10 or 15 on, in the country under Brian Kelly. Still one in six against top five teams under Brian Kelly the one win, I believe, was against a team that didn't have its starting quarterback, who was the number one draft pick in the NFL, and three starters on defense on the road, or on the road for Clemson. So that was a bit of a tarnished win, the one against the top five. So there's no question that this program has struggled, whether that's uh, Willingham, Davey, Weiss, Kelly on the sideline against elite competition going on 30 years now. Now they head to the shoe, Steve. Yeah, what I don't like is new head coach, although I think he'll do a good job there, and new quarterback uh, on the road in the first game. I don't like that for Notre Dame. Um, I just think that's that's a, a recipe for disaster, although Lincoln Riley did come into Ohio Stadium three or four years ago with Oklahoma, although he had Baker Mayfield at quarterback uh, who had been proven, um, and they, they – they beat the Buckeyes, but uh, and it was only his second game against a coach who had three national championships to his credit, Urban Meyer. But uh, you know, um, Ohio State is catching Notre Dame this year in the right place at Ohio Stadium and at the right time at the beginning of the season because I do believe Notre Dame can be a top ten team by the end of the year. Uh, end up in the top ten. Do they also play Clemson later on? Does that sound right? So they may end up 10 and 2, 11 and 1, depending on how that other game goes. Probably 10 and 2, if I had to guess. And, um, you know, still right on the cusp of the top 10, probably in one of the major bowl games. And a successful first year for Marcus Freeman on the whole. I think the flip is true next year because, and again, I can't sit here and quote you exactly, uh, you know, who all Notre Dame would have back next year. Uh, Ohio State would be going into South Bend next year. It's not the first game. I think it's the second or the third game of the season uh, next year at uh, South Bend with a new quarterback, although Kyle McCord has at least started one game previously to this year. If he's the guy or Devin Brown, you know, potentially a guy one way or the other hasn't played a lot of football and, uh, you know, holes at a lot of key positions. I think you're going to lose – Dewan Jones, possibly Matthew Jones, Paris Johnson. I mean, you're going to have to dip into the portal to fill out an offensive line, in my opinion, for Ohio State next year. Um, you know, you would have some guys in their contract year, uh, you know, like Sawyer and Tuya Malawau and uh, Travion Henderson in particular. Those three guys are going to need to have a, a good uh, junior year next year to, to get where they want to be. But uh you know, I think there'll be some holes on this team at Ohio State next year and a lot of youth. Uh, so, you know, this this year's game skews toward Ohio State. Next year's game, you know, is probably a pick em or whatever or skews a little bit more toward Notre Dame. But, uh, again, they play these games on the field, and maybe this kid from Notre Dame is going to turn out to be, you know, one of their best quarterbacks uh, in their history. We just don't know. I mean, it's uh, – you know, so early in the season, so early in the process, you can't really say. But uh, a lot of the variables favor Ohio State. A few of them that don't is Ohio State hasn't done very well at home in these marquee non-conference games. When you think about USC and Virginia Tech and Oklahoma in particular, there's three of them right there that they didn't win uh, here in the last 10 or 12 years. They did beat Miami, I think, under Trestle in 2010. But um, – I'm not sure, you know, who else in this last stretch, uh, you know, really, really stacks up uh, like that non-conference wise, uh, that that was a good opponent for them, uh, you know, that, that, that they were able to hold serve at home. Yeah. That game next year is their OSU's third game of the season. So 
They'll have warm-ups against Youngstown State and Western Kentucky and not necessarily have to show anything, even though their identity will still be pretty well known because of Ryan Day's offense and Jim Knowles' defense. It's you know They are what they are, and they're very good, so not a lot of need to hide stuff. But getting that as the third game next year for Kyle McCord or Devin Brown uh, or maybe Dylan Riola enrolls a year early, who knows, and wins the job. He's going the Ewers things. route, baby. Too soon. Um, no, I, I, I think, um, yeah, having that game three next year is is almost perfect if you're going to have them on the schedule for Ohio State. Yeah. Willie, I, I brought this up in our private chat. Willie raised the question earlier, one of the posters, that why would you play Notre Dame? And I think there are a couple of reasons. Um, Gene Smith and his scheduling philosophy, the athletic director, who was a Notre Dame football player, you know, a thousand years ago, I'm dating Gene now. It was the early 70s, and he was there around the time of uh, uh, Rudy, I believe. He may have been on the team when that whole Rudy thing was going down. Um, he uh, he wants him to play a top 10 or top 15 non-conference team every year. He then wants him to play a top 40 uh, caliber team, depending on where it may come from. It could be another Power 5 team, or it could be – you know, American team or Conference USA or whoever. And then he wants that other game <clears throat> to be uh, um, a mid-American type opponent, that type of opponent. So a high major, a mid-major, a high to mid-major, and then a, a, you know, for lack of a better term, a mid to low major, you know, to put it in basketball terms. I, I don't want to say that Mac is low major football. But um, what I the point I want to make is, is you do that one to get your football team ready for the big the rigors of the Big Ten. One, two, uh, you do it to differentiate yourself from other playoff contenders. If you're able to beat a team like Notre Dame, it puts you into the playoff. Like the year they went to Oklahoma and won, despite losing to Iowa later in the season and not even winning the Big Ten championship, they were branded a playoff team because they'd beaten Oklahoma way back when. You can't put Oklahoma in if you without putting Ohio State in. So, you know, they got in. So it serves a purpose. And the last thing is it brings value for your television partners. This thing's going to draw, you know, 15 million, 18 million viewers, maybe, depending on how good the game is. And this brings value for your television partners and the TV deal. And ultimately, it's all a television show at this point. Um, it'll mean less. I don't know which way this is going to cut when they go to eight or 12 teams Will you want to play more strenuous, rigorous non-conference games, or will it not matter who you play because the best eight teams are going to get in regardless of who they do? And one other thing on scheduling, somebody was crapping all over Michigan. I don't know the circumstances that have led them to have to play Hawaii, Connecticut, and Colorado State this year, but people in glass houses cannot throw stones. Ohio State had a contract with a high major fall through a few years ago, and Cincinnati was the best team on their non-conference schedule, uh, maybe the first or second fickle year when they beat them 42 to nothing in Ohio Stadium, probably 18, 17, 18 around then. So, you know, kind of cuts both ways. You got to kind of, you know, be careful what you, you know, be careful where, you, where you're throwing your stone because uh, that one comes back to hit you right upside the head based on 2017. And then, or 2018, and then, you know, uh, you don't make the playoff after, you know, whatever happened later on that season. So there you go.